everyone. Hope everyone's having a good semester the last couple weeks. I uh, just wanted to create a video for this week. I'm going to try to create more videos throughout the rest of the semester. Um, but so uh, just want to kind of talk a little bit about some things that I thought was interesting from the articles uh, that we that are we are reading this week um, and then moving into next week. Uh, continuing with the future of uh, work in education. And so the first article is the future of talent development. And uh, being an adjunct faculty member myself and being a contingent worker, you know, it, I think that one really struck home to me and hopefully kind of uh, shows you where a lot of our industries uh, in uh, the, the, con the country specifically, but even the world are going. You know, there's a lot more um, contingent workers. Uh, adjunct faculty actually... Uh, make up almost 50% of faculty members uh, in high in the United States higher education. So um, it's very much, you know, it's it's a cost saving measure for businesses, um, but it also comes with uh, downfalls. You know, you know, think about Uber and Lyft or maybe freelancers. Uh, you know, they're not they're not being paid as much. They're not getting uh, there's a lack of benefits. You know, unreliable work schedules, things like that. So. Um, you know, contingent worker is definitely, you know, it's not just a higher education thing. It's definitely, you know, industries across across the globe. Um, and, you know, I, I, I thought it was uh, striking that, you know, we've talked about automation um, and the future of professions talked about automation. But really, a lot of businesses really don't have a plan for it yet. You know, yeah, there's a lot of machine, machine learning going on. There's, but there's a, there's a huge upfront cost of these. And, I, I think I said this in our first uh, meeting when we all met each other, but I really do believe in, in that article talked about, you know, the automated pieces are going to be the pieces that, um, you know, are more repetitive and it's not the, the interpersonal interactions. Yeah, maybe eventually, you know, 50, 100 years down the road when machines, you know, continue to get more sophisticated. But for right now, I, I, I believe most businesses are going to use it for the more those repetitive tasks. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we, you know, one of the, art, the next article we talked about, you know, the employability skills, marketable skills. You know, machines right now, uh, you know, yeah, they can problem solve, they can adapt, they can communicate, but can they really do it as well as human beings can? Um, and, you know, that'd be my question to you. I think there's, you know, there's a lot of different um, opinions on that out there. But, you know, the employability skills for 21st century, we, we talk about it a lot um, in higher education, you know, in all institutions that I work at. in the state of Texas, for example, um, we call it marketable skills. And so every course, every program that we do, you know, is is related to those marketable skills. And so how are we teaching our students to be adaptable, to be resilient, to uh, participate in teams? You know, we do a lot of group work in class, et cetera. Um, and then, you know, uh, the other art, one of the other articles, you know, the OE, the education learning framework, I, I think that, you know, talked about students entering school in 2018. And so, you know, that was last year. You know, so they still have, you know, 13, you know, 11, 12 years of school to go. But the whole the whole mind frame, you know, our frame of mind has to change in terms of education. You know, their uh, students are going to grow up and we're all growing up in a world where resources are becoming a lot more limited. Not only natural resources, but financial resources, you know, work smarter, not harder, work, you know, do more with less. Mm -hmm. And so changing that mindset. Um But, you know, the other piece of that is, you know, we need to make sure we're teaching students. Um, sorry, I got like 20 pages going on on the computer here. Uh, you know, we have to teach students how to create goals and to learn from those goals and to work with others, uh, have differing perspectives. Um, and, and, you know, I think that's at the end of the day, you know, if we can teach our students to do that, um, then you'll, and especially if you can do that, you'll be the type of employee that, you know, in the mindset video, you know, that the author was talking about, you know, you're going to be able to uh, be that individual that can make a huge difference in, in your industry that uh, can be a team leader that can uh, be resilient. You know, he talked about resiliency. And so uh, I thought it was interesting how he said, you know, leaders would trade 7.3 
members of their team for one person that embodied you know the mindset the the growth mindset and so uh, if you haven't done a lot of reading about grit or growth mindset i would encourage you to look up um uh, angela duckworth is another author uh, that talks about grit um, she's pretty well known and now i'm actually going to a conference um in two weeks about grit so hopefully i can uh maybe make another video about that or share some resources for you all because uh, i i really think that's important so well, I hope you all are having a great week, um, and I will uh, I'll try to make another video next week, um, hopefully a, uh, maybe a little sooner uh, than midweek. All right, take it easy.